we're back with the third and hopefully final installation of this uh, suspension portion of this series. We're going to be doing uh, something a little bit more advanced. Just to review, this is what we've got so far. Our basic lift with some basic, basic um, leaf springs in the back and a skid plate in front. Uh, we've got a little bit uh, bigger lift here with some sort of basic looking shocks, same leaf springs, and some shocks in the front that are a little bit, uh, you know, different. Like got a camber to them or, or whatever. Uh, the next one we're going to do is uh, going to be quite a bit different. We're going to be building the, we're going to be scratch building the suspension. We're not going to be using the existing, you know, little archway on the bottom of the car. Uh, we're going to be using this guy here, which is a 77 Dodge van, Hot Wheel. It's metal bottom, so it's going to make things a little bit trickier. But we're actually going to build the suspension, build all the pieces. It's going to lift it quite a, quite a ways off the, off the car. It's going to have a big uh, kind of four-wheel drive look to it. We're going to be making a uh, drive shaft and custom shocks. And we're going to be taking the wheels off of this one. So I already, this used to have a roll cage on it. I took it off for another build. Um, but we're going to take this apart real quick and grab these wheels off of here. And I'm going to take this to the shop and show you another uh, kind of better way to take these apart that I recently discovered while I was messing around. Um, so I did already show how to take these apart. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a review, and I'm not going to make, you know, a big, long explanation about it. I'm just going to show you what I do now, which is a little bit different. So let's head to the shop. So um, we're going to use the drill press again, but the difference here is that we're going to be using this... Focus. We're going to be using this countersink bit. And the reason is because it's got a pretty fine tip on it which is basically going to drill through the rivet uh, and make its own kind of pilot hole that guides the rest of the bit through. That way, you know, when we get the, this drill bit goes, all right, focus. Drill bit's gonna go straight into that little hole and it's gonna guide itself through and make a really clean, um, you know, really clean hole in the top of that rivet. And once it gets down to the fat part of the countersink bit, it's just going to, you know, ream out that whole thing. So let me install this bit real quick. All right, we got the bit installed and we've got the uh, little truck inside the vise. So we're just gonna drill these out and we'll see how it goes. I didn't, uh, I wasn't careful, I don't really care about this car, it's just going to be junk after this, so I just blasted right through it. But as you can see, it makes really short work of those rivets. So let's turn this around, the other one. Nice clean hole on both sides and I went through this one too like I said the only reason I'm even using this drill bit on here is just to show you the you know kind of discovery that I made these uh, countersink drill bits are really nice and if you could get like a steeper one you know it's not so gradual um, or maybe even move the countersink part down towards the end that way the once it gets to this part the hole is gonna be really fat that is drilling you could probably you know, get the exact right bit or configuration to just pop these out instantly. But uh, anyway, let's get back inside. All right, back inside. We've got our wheels. And we got our model. So let's get started. I 
the first thing we're going to need are some axles. Uh, we're going to be using the same material. We're going to be using this aluminum tube. But you could just as easily use, you know, a toothpick if that's what you got. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but if you're going to use a toothpick, basically you're just going to take this pin out completely and then just glue the toothpick directly to the center of the hub there. And it'll kind of give you the same effect. Um, you know, if you can't find these aluminum tubes anywhere. So we're going to pop this guy apart. Don't need that. And we're just going to measure, you know, how wide we want this. And I guess actually, you know, it might be helpful to have this in here just to see where the body kind of ends. And you know what, since we're elevating our build here a little bit, let's elevate our, our technique also. Um, so instead of just you know, eyeballing this and kind of sighting down the thing to see how wide it is, what we're going to do is use a pair of calipers. And this is just the basic kind of just rolls with this little wheel. You can get digital calipers and a bunch of different styles or whatever. But in this case, it doesn't really matter what the measurement is. We're not going to be paying attention to the measurement. What we're going to do is just see how wide the car is at that point. And now we know how wide our axle is going to be. We can compare the back, see if it's a little, if it's the same. Looks like it's about the same, maybe a tiny bit wider. So we're just going to adjust, we'll make them both the same. And since the rear is maybe a fraction of a millimeter longer, we use that measurement and then we're just going to take our measurement and we're going to actually no. see there's a slight bend in this one so we're just going to tweak it a little bit and if you kind of roll it like this kind of normalize whatever bends are in there and if you get too crazy with it it's just going to bend up the whole thing so be careful doing that kind of stuff we're just going to mark here, mark with our fingernail, and then put a little saw mark in there. All right, I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to cut it, um, use the knife rolling technique, and we'll be right back. I'll make two of these. All right. Got our two axles, pretty much the same length, as close as I could get them anyway. And so now, it matches up here. They're the same width as the body. Like I said, we're not going to be attaching this to here. It's going to be a little more complicated than that. What we're going to do is build some suspension you know, that goes from here to here. And we're going to build some actual shocks. And now that we've got these here, let's move on to building those shocks now. Now, if you don't know what shocks look like, um, go ahead to do a Google image search. Um, should come up with plenty of reference materials for you. Um, now we've got, like I said before, got these aluminum tubes, right? And these come in a bunch of different sizes. I'm just going to start throwing some stuff out of here. You can pretty much get them in any diameter. The ones that we're using for these axles, if you don't recall, it's 1.57 millimeter. So we're going to find some that are big enough to where these these axle size poles will fit inside snugly. Like to say, those are way too big. Um, these ones might work. Those look too big, also. I think 
these are just the right size. Yeah. These ones here, the 2.38 millimeter, are just the right size to fit these small guys in there. And that's what we're going to do. And just for reference, I'm just going to show these together. So we're using 1.57 millimeter and 2.38 millimeter. But that 0.355 millimeter is important uh, because that's the thickness of the wall. So if you get, you know, 2.38 millimeter tube and the walls are thicker, well, these are not going to fit. So, you know, experiment around. If you can't find exactly what you're looking for, um, you may have to use different sizes than what I'm using. But, uh, you know, it should all work out. So here's what we've got going here. This is the axle, so we're going to need to cut some shorter pieces. But what we need to do is figure out how, how short these are going to be. So the top, you know, I'm probably going to throw a picture of some shocks up on the screen right here as part of the video. So, uh, so we can compare these. But basically, we're going to have one part of the shock be this thick tube, and then the bottom part is going to be that. And so we're, we're going to put two shocks in the back. Uh, it's a little non-standard, but uh, I think it looks cool. And those are also going to be what's supporting the axle. Also, not super standard, but what it ends up looking like is this. So we've got the shock. In this, I did one straight up and down, and then one kind of at a side, you know, sideways angle. You kind of see them better here. Paint starting to chip off of them. As you can see where the two tubes fit together. And you see the axle is not resting on the car. It's being supported by these shocks here. So we're going to do something very similar. And what we need is to cut a couple lengths of shock off of here. Uh, so I'm just going to make an arbitrary decision. And I'm going to follow, I don't know if you can see it very well in the video. But I'm going to follow the contour of that piece in the back. And I'm going to extend this all the way up to the end. All the way till it goes in. So that's my length. Whenever you can base your lengths, you know, your dimensions off of something on the car itself, that's always really easy. So and then I'm going to end it kind of right at that uh, little crotch of that thing there. And then uh, maybe a little higher. Okay, so right there. That's going to be my shock. It's going to be pretty long, but a lot of it's going to be hidden. So we're going to saw into it there. A little saw blade mark, and I'm just gonna cut that off camera. And this is what we've got. It looks a little long, like I said, but a lot of it's gonna be up inside the car there. So I'm just gonna cut uh, three more like this. There we go. And here are our four pipe lengths, and these are gonna go. These will be the top portion of the shocks, and uh, we need some more of the very skinny stuff for the bottom portion. And I kind of like to just go through after I cut these, make sure that we can fit these pipes in here. There we go. So we're good. Oh, that one's got a little bit of smashed on that side, so maybe we'll use this side. Oop. So these bigger, bigger tubes tend to be a little less resistant to smashing 
or cutting, I mean, they tend to get a little distorted, even using the knife method. So sometimes they need to be reamed out, but that's a nice tight fit in there. That's good. Try the other end on that one. There we go. Cool. All right, I've got them all facing the same direction so that the hole that I tested is on that side, so I know which one's going to go where. What we're going to do is just take one. And basically shove it in there as far as it'll go. Generally, that's at the end. If you if you were running low on tubes and you wanted to save a little bit of material, you could just barely put it in the end and measure it out exactly. Um, I'm not running low. And this is a lot easier to glue this way. So we're just going to put a little dab of glue. On the end there. And some of it's going to drip down. That's okay. Or we'll put a gigantic dab of glue on there. Because we're watching the camera and we're not watching what we're doing. Okay, so we're just going to leave that there. I'm going to dab it a little bit. Don't dab it with your fingers because you're going to get your fingers stuck on something. So your fingers get stuck together. You can't get them apart. Okay. So we'll just let that dry for a few seconds and come back. Now sometimes you don't get good enough contact with those glue surfaces and it'll just pop right off. If that's the case for your shocks, you take your um, trusty brush on glue or any other super glue. I'm just gonna put some on there like that. then no matter what, you're pretty much guaranteed to have some glued surface in there somewhere. And then, you know, wipe the excess off on a paper towel, not on your fingers. There you go. And as you can see, that already looks like some shocks, right? And you didn't even really do much. So in the final product, if you wanted to paint the top a different color as the bottom, like in my other vehicle, um, you know, the tops are blue. Uh, it really goes a long way to selling it. Now, in a real car, if this was, you know, a 4x4 with some beefed up suspension or whatever, you probably would not have two shocks supporting it this way. You would most likely have um, on each side, well, a pair of shocks, you know, one on each side, and then have some leaf springs or, you know, some big coil springs. Or you might have a combination of shock with coil over springs or a mixture of all of those things. And you got to kind of look at what you're trying to do. Um, I'm probably not going to put a leaf spring on this one because I already did the kind of leaf spring shock combo on here. And we did leaf springs here. So, I mean, for a tutorial's sake, I'm not going to just repeat the same thing again. Um, but this one is going to have double shocks on it, on the back. And uh, we might do something different from the front. Um, we'll see. But you probably would want something a little more beefy than double shocks in the back. If this was uh, meant to be you know, an off-road vehicle, probably have something more substantial. But that's going to look about like that. And you can adjust it in and out however length you want, whatever length you want. Um, I was going to put it all the way up in there, but it seems like, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like this cavern inside there. Actually, let's investigate. Because that might be, I like the insides of this car. <laughs> you can't really see it, 
there's never really a time where you're gonna see the stuff inside there but uh, I like that they added the back seats and I don't know this is cool to me uh, let's see oops let's get this on right okay so if the shocks were up in there I guess it's these little I don't know if those are supposed to be nitrous cans or what what those are but uh, if we stick this up in here we can glue to the inside of that it's not quite in the same spot that I was wanting over here but uh, I don't know if we should look this gift horse in the mouth Oh, we'll figure that out. Anyway, let's get these shocks cut to length because we know about where they're going to be. And in this case, I don't really mind that they're going to have a crimped end. So I'm going to cut it like that. And we can leave it crimped, leave it flattened like that. Or we can try to round it back out. But in this case, it's actually going to be easier to have this gluing surface here. So let's do the same thing. I'm just going to uh, do the same thing with those three. I'll be right back. And here are our four shocks. And these are gonna go up inside here. And we'll have two shocks per tire. That's why there's four. And then we'll figure out what we're doing for the front. All right, let's get this, whoa, let's get this assembled. All right, now let's see where we're going to put these. I still kind of like the idea of going with that contour. existing size there. Uh, one thing that we're going to need to take into account is our axles. <clears throat> wherever the wherever the shocks come down, they need to meet on the side of the axle. You know, like that. So I'm going to put probably one in front and one in back of the axle. So if you were you know smart and you kind of planned ahead and you know made a sketch or whatever of your design you'd probably be in a better spot but i kind of just fly by the seat of my pants and just make it up as i go along the other thing we're going to need to do before everything gets put on there is um, I've got these beads that I like to use and these are just little plastic uh, beads these might even be perler beads I'm not sure I haven't tried to melt one yet but um, if you've ever looked at the bottom of a car again you probably want to you know have your Google image search up but um, on the rear axle of a, of a rear wheel drive car anyway you're going to have this sort of piece in the middle where the uh, drive shaft attaches to and these won't these are a little bit big so we're going to trim them down um, but these are going to go on the inside if you see I think yeah actually you can kind of see on the sculpt, the piece that I'm trying to emulate here. So the drive shaft comes from the engine, or well, from the transmission, and it connects to the back here. And I don't know what that piece is called off the top of my head, but it's basically what drives the, it, you know, transfers the power to the wheels from the drive shaft, ultimately from the engine, but um, it converts the spinning rotational force this way into rotational force this way. And we're going to kind of make something that almost resembles it. 
just by simply putting a bead over and actually where's the other car you can see I did the same thing here my drive shaft comes straight off of the transmission it goes here but if you don't like that that hard angle on there what you can do is uh, connect your drive shaft extension to the existing drive shaft skull so let's see if we even have one on this car no we don't so let's we're gonna make since we already kind of have the piece that connects to the transmission here I made it with another one of those beads We'll just connect the drive shaft here. We'll continue it down the sculpt, and then we'll go at a different angle from here to here. So there, in a real car, there would be like a universal joint or CV joint or something in the middle that will allow that rotation around the, because your shafts are gonna be like this. So if you turn this, you want this to turn the same way, but keep that bend, you know? Uh, again, Google those parts, uh, CV joint, universal joint. You'll see what I'm talking about. So we'll do that on this one. In this one, you know, you kind of have this drive shaft hanging out here. So if you hit something, you know, it's it's more exposed. So it's not really ideal for you know a war machine. So we'll uh, create a different angle with ours. But these beads are what we're going to use for that. Um, but that's going to come later. We need to figure out what we're going to do with this. So, I wish this would stay on here. I might just tape it shut. So, we'll figure out our angle. Actually, one sec. We're just going to make a mark here so we don't have to keep holding this shut. Approximately, this thing starts here and this. Graphic pencil is not going to make it super dark mark. But if we continue it through here. Okay. I think you can kind of see that, right? Yeah, we'll do it on the other side too. This doesn't have to be super exact. All right, let me clean that up off camera real quick. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we got a mark. That works. All right, note to self, and well, well to, to all of you also, graphite pencil draws on this pretty well. Oh, but you know what I did there? They don't really meet in the same place. So let's uh, let's see if we can fix that. That one's there. So this one needs to come to about here. So I'll fix that real quick. Okay, there we go. Pretty good. Okay, and uh, you know what we're going to do now? We're just going to glue those on there. Let's see where they end up. So I'm going to position these shocks to where the flattened end is going to be pointed this way, not like that, like that. That way when it's resting against the axle, we'll have more gluing surface, okay? And I'm just going to glue that directly to here to where the shock, the bottom where the, these, this transition happens, is even with the uh, mold lines on this casting. And I'm going to hold it at that angle. So this is just going to be some glue. Make sure I'm holding this the right way. And we're going to follow that angle. And it's going to hold it there. And I'm going to hold it there off camera. All right, now once that glue is kind of set, I'm going to take the, uh, the gel glue and lay a bead right behind it. 
We'll clean off the tip first, though. Can't see anything with that little fuzz ball on there. Nope. A little glob there. There we go. I should hold it until it's all ready. Okay, that's on there pretty good now. Um, but we're going to take it a step further because we're going to be potentially torquing on this a little bit to get things to match up. Um, and this is now the support for the axle. So it needs to be pretty strong. So we're going to lay some additional. Uh, this is liquid super glue because we need to go down in that crack. down in there and down in there and I'm going to take a little bit of scrap toothpick here and I'm going to make sure that's way down in there and while we're here, I'm gonna double up on that uh, that gel in the back here. That's not gonna be seen, so get as messy as you want on there. And might as well. Some down here too. Okay. And we're gonna let that sit and dry also. But while we do that, let's take a look, or before we do that, let's just take a look at it. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right now. It's on there, oh, not on there too good. So let's Let's uh, make sure that's going to be good to go before we mess with it at all. I'm going to let that sit for, I don't know, 15 minutes. And then I'm going to come back and do the other side. And then I'll see you then. All right. And here's what we got. You just line them up to the side like that. You can see. I'm going to try to get them as even as possible. Um height-wise, length-wise, position, everything. Because when you get to this point, your axles are actually going to attach to the back of those shocks. The shocks are now the support for these axles. And so if you don't get them perfectly straight, your wheels are gonna not be straight. So, that's the next step now. We're going to attach that axle. And for that, we will use gel glue. We're going to put a glob on the back of each one of these shocks. And the reason we're using gel glue for this is because it's going to stay in a glob and it's not going to uh, drip or run and stay right where we want it. And so we're gonna kind of lay this flat so that the glue, I know I just said it was not gonna drip, but it will kind of slump over. And we wanna put this, this is gonna be really hard to do in focus, but we're just gonna lay it on the back of here on the flat parts of those shocks where we flatten the ends out. And we're gonna just position it where we want it. And we're gonna kind of eyeball it see where it needs to be adjusted while the glue is still drying. So we're lining up with that back bumper there. So you can see it's a little bit far out on that side. So we're going to scooch it in. And 
And we also need to adjust it this way too. It's a little too far to one side. That almost looks perfect. That's pretty good. Making sure it's flat this way. It's not flat that way. Oop, and then the whole thing comes off. So this is kind of a fiddly bit. gonna let that dry. Go back to uh, playing some Diablo 2 while this dries. Just double check that everything is in a good spot. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and when this is completely dry, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna lay down some some of the liquid super glue in the cracks just like I did before to support it. Make sure everything's totally uh, dry before we move on to the next step. All right, now that Andariel is dead and the rogues can rest, we've got this glued up. So I went back and I put in a couple more uh, you know, treatments of liquid super glue. You see it kind of starting to build up in the corners there. And that's okay. So now the next step is to take our other shocks and figure out where we're going to put them. So I think these probably will go on the outside of these. Maybe so it'll be a little bit offset. And these ones maybe will go straight up and down. Maybe they'll rest in that little notch there. That might be an easy way to do it. In fact, I think I'll make the executive decision right now and say that's where they're going to go. Oops. Turn that. Just like that. That double shock you could go crazy and just put three or I've seen them with four usually when there's four shocks there's sort of two uh, regular size shocks straight up and down and then there's two smaller shocks attached to the sides and that could work for sure usually see that on kind of monster trucks um, actually I've got a monster truck here see they've got a double shock in the front double shock in the back and they've also got some extra suspension. But uh, we're just gonna put a glob of that to glue here in this little notch. And we're also gonna put some here. Not really a great camera angle, sorry. And we're gonna take a shock, rotate it so we have the the flat, the flattened side against the axle. And then we're gonna just plop it in there. Just like that. And make sure that it's kind of flat here. Don't want it sticking out. 
That was pretty painless. Oh, well, that was quick. Let's just do the other side one. Side of this one. Look about right. Yeah. Maybe down a tick. Maybe we can sight it sideways and see. Yeah, hang on. That's gonna work out. So I guess it's more drying time. Back to D two for me. All right, got all that glued up. There was a slight hitch in the giddy up there. Um, I got this put on there to see how it's gonna look. When I snapped it in there, those uh, second set of shocks were a little too long and they bumped into something on the inside and broke off, so I had to re-glue them. But they're looking pretty cool now. That's what we're left with in there. So after they get painted up, they're gonna look pretty good. And so the next step is to, uh, actually, let me show you what I ended up doing to fix it. These ones are a little too long, so I just snipped them, see how they're crunched. You won't see that though, they're gonna be up in there. And if it did bother you that they were a little bit crunched, again, you just take your Needle nose pliers, give them a little crunch in the opposite direction, and round them back out again. All right. But I'm going to leave them crunched because I don't want to have to fit them in there again. And it might have been that crunch that helped it fit. Okay. So now the next step is to get that little middle piece back in there. The way we're going to do that. We're just going to take one of our one of our little beads, and these are little plastic kind of rubbery beads. Like I said, I think they're perler beads. I'm not sure. We're just going to cut them. Down the center. So we're actually trying to cut a section out, not just cut it. We don't want the whole ring. There we go. Oops. Off camera, out of frame. Let's see. So we got that little section out of there. Right. Basically, just slip this. over that. Easy peasy. And it doesn't look like much at the moment. And in all honesty, it's not going to look like much when we're done. But art is all about giving the illusion that something is there. If you look at an oil painting, and you see a tree, you're not going to see one leaf painted for every leaf that's on the tree. You're going to see the indication that there are leaves on a tree. You might not even see any individual brush strokes that represent the leaf. But when you look at it, you know that it's a tree and you know that it has leaves. And the same thing is going to happen here. There's a bunch of things that you could do to this. Um, one 
is you could bevel the edges down so it has more of a rounded kind of shape to it. Uh, you could sand them down, or you could leave them like it is. Um, you can experiment, try a couple different things, but what we want to do for now is get this to close up around that axle. And that's why we took that uh, chunk out, because it's too big for that axle. So, I'm going to take some brush on glue and brush it on. I'm going to brush it over both sides. Oops, that might work still. All right. And we're just gonna close that. Well, actually we're gonna make sure it's centered first. And we're gonna close it up. Oh, geez, sorry. Yeah, we're going to put the seam on this side because that's where the drive shaft is going to attach to so we can hide our crimes as Adam Savage likes to say. All right, I'm going to hold that until it dries. Actually while that's drying, if you can't find any of these little beads, um, you could use pretty much anything. You could use some air dry clay and kind of just sculpt it around it. Maybe some two part epoxy and, you know, just sculpt this little shape around it. Like Google, you know, rear axles and you'll see with the shape that we're going for here and anything will pretty much work. You could also have done the same thing we did before with the different size pipes, you know, and took the axle and, you know, You know, stuck it in the end here, made a, wow, can't get it in there. You know, and then cut off a little piece. And you'd get a little bit of a step up, and then you could go a step further. And get another size up, keep going. And you could step it up and keep going until it looks exactly like what we're looking for. But I mean, for this one, we're just going to use the bead, and it'll turn out pretty good. All right, still in that dry. Back in a little bit. All right, that's all. All right, that's all dry. This is what we've got here. And I also went ahead and did this off camera. Basically, I created this little shape, and it's just the same tube I used for the axles with a little, a couple caps of the bigger tube. And what that's going to do. So we're going to glue that to the end of there, and we'll pick it up with this thing. So I'm going to glue it to the end of there, and it's going to act as the drive shaft. And then we're going to put another piece that connects from that drive shaft to there. And that's just going to be a little piece of toothpick. You could use uh, more tube if you wanted. Um, but the toothpick is going to be easy to cut and it's going to be easy to shape and everything. So let's just put a little dab of glue. Actually, use the gel glue for this one. A little dab of gel glue. On the end there. Let's get our little grabbers. Focus. Like 
be a little lower. There we go. Oop. That's not what we want. Pretty tough looking through the camera, staying focused. Let's try a different angle here. Uh, I would like it to be a little higher. There we go. That's pretty perfect there. And these little kind of caps are going to represent those uh, joints that I was talking about. And now that that's in the right spot, we're going to Sort of lock it in with some super glue. Okay. And let that dry. Actually, while that's drying, might as well cut this guy up. I'm just going to snip the spike off the end. And we're going to measure. There to there. Snip it. And it's already some glue there. So we might be able to just put it into place. Nope. Tiniest little bit snip off the end here. Okay, now it's probably too short. A little too short. But that's okay. Not really. Is it okay? I don't know. Just don't know. And lock this in with some focus. For some reason, this glue isn't pouring out anymore. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you could hear that on the camera, but it just spit out a big air bubble at me. There we go. Move that into place here. Okay. Okay, and this is what we got. And I think that will work for that. And I think I was hoping to get this done in three videos, but this is running long already. So I think we're going to end this one here. And we got some cool rear suspension. Got our drive shaft running into our transmission. And then we'll do something special for the front. I think what we're going to do is uh, make two more of those shocks. And then we're going to do some coilover springs. But uh, that's where I'm going to end this one. I'll see you next time.